Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today I'm talking about all the books that I read in the month of November. Yeah, so it is December 1st as I'm filming this. Wild, right? Like we are closing out 2021. I have to tell you, November was not my best reading month by several different metrics, if we're being honest. It was my lowest reading month in terms of pages read. It was one of my lowest reading months in terms of things read. It was one of my lowest reading months in terms of average star rating given out. <laughs> like just not terrible. There were definitely some highlights, but not not my best not my best reading month. There are probably a few reasons for this. I got sick twice. Thankfully neither of them were COVID, but I got sick twice. One of my kids got sick. I had a video go viral on TikTok, which was super distracting and took a lot of time. So I just, there were, there were a lot of things. Thanksgiving holidays, kids needing more time and attention. It is what it is. Will December be better? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. If you are new to my end of month wrap ups, the way that these work is I start by talking about all of my stats for the month. And then I will talk about all the books that I read, beginning with my DNFs, books I chose not to finish, then my lowest rated books, moving up to my highest rated books. I am super nerdy about my reading stats. But if you are not and want to skip forward to where I actually start reviewing books, you are more than welcome to do so. This is usually the first few minutes of the video. I know some of you love my stats as much as I do, but it's not for everyone. And I, I can I can understand that. It's okay. In the month of November, I read 25 books for a total of 9042 pages, which is 301 pages a day. Uh, that might sound high to you, but it is not. My typical averages are more like 350 or more per day. And this is the first time all year I've been under 10,000 pages in a month. So it's been a slower than usual reading month. Part of it also might be I had a little bit of a slump at the beginning of the month because I had some major disappointments, although things got better from there, as you will see. This month I DNF'd two books, which we're going to talk about. Eight of the books that I read were indie published, two of them were rereads, 13 of them were ARCs or books sent to me for review. That's pretty typical for me, about half my reading. This month I did not read any translated fiction and I did not read any graphic novels. I did, however, listen to plenty of audiobooks. Surprise, surprise. 14 of the books that I read were in fact audiobooks. This is again pretty typical, slightly over half of my reading. I also read three ebooks and eight physical books. Looking at my audiobooks, five of those are what I term shelf, which means that they were on my physical TBR shelf and I got them off via audio. And in terms of where those audiobooks are coming from, five of them were from Audible, three of them were from my library, five of them were audio review copies from NetGalley, and one of them was an audio review copy through Authors Direct, which is not on this list, but it's a way for indie authors to send an audiobook for review to directly. This month I did not listen to anything from Libro.fm, Chirp, Scribd, or Volumes. <laughs> Looking at the age breakdown, this is not going to come as any big surprise. In the month of November, 18 of the books that I read were targeted at an adult audience, six of them were targeted at a YA audience, and one of them was targeted at a middle grade audience. This is par for the course for me. Looking at publication date, the earliest published work that I read this month was 1955. That probably would have been Return of the King by Tolkien. 13 of the books that I read were published prior to 2021. That is what I'm calling backlist. You'll note this is the first month of the year that it's not saying prior to 2020, which means that I have read my first 2022 release. So uh, let's note that 11 of the books that I read this month were published in 2021. And one of them is a 2022 release that has not yet come out. In terms of author demographics, it's a little bit of a mixed bag this month. Only 40% of the books that I read this month were written by Black, Indigenous, or person of color authors. 60% of them were by white authors. In general, I'm trying to aim for closer to 50%, so that is definitely lower than usual. But I did read more than usual from Indigenous authors. 12% of the books that I read this month were by Indigenous authors, which is great because it's Native American Heritage Month, so I was trying to read more of that. On the other hand, I did read a lot from queer authors. 36% of the books that I read are from members of the LGBT 
a QIP Plus community. And that's great. I'm generally aiming for around 25% on average. Okay, next let's look at the genres that I read from. This month, by far, my most read genre was fantasy. I read 11 fantasy books in November. The next highest was romance. Th this is not surprising. Like fantasy and romance are usually my most read genres. This month I read six in romance. One of them was historical romance, one of them was speculative romance, and four of them were contemporary romance. I also read two sci-fi, one contemporary fiction, one historical fiction, one horror, one literary fiction, one nonfiction, and one poetry. Moving on, let's talk about my star ratings. You may be able to see that they trended a little bit lower on average than usual. This month I did not give any books one or one and a half stars. I gave two books two stars, two books got two and a half stars, three books got three stars, one book got three and a half stars, five books got four stars, four books got four and a half stars, seven books got five stars, and one book got six stars. And in my personal rating scale, six stars is what I give to a favorite of the year. So this month I had one of those. Lastly, let's take a look at my reading challenges I set for myself for the year. Uh, no big surprise here. I, I think I'm gonna say probably there will not be any more progress on the series. I, that is a failure in terms of goals this year, which is fine. I will, I will not do so many series books next year. I have read six of the eight classics on my TBR. I have completed all the sci-fi fantasy books. Yes, the final one was Return of the King, so very proud of that. And I've only read four of the 14 series completion books that I wanted to read. It's fine. It's all fine. All right, so that's the month I've had. I, I've definitely had some not so great books, but I have had a few that have been fantastic as well. We're going to go ahead and dive into the books that I read and my DNFs. But just so you know, some of these I did talk about in other places. I think about 11 of them I talked about at greater length in my mid-month wrap up, which I will link up above if you haven't seen it yet. For those books, I'm just going to tell you what the title is and the star rating. And if you want to hear more detailed thoughts, you can check out that video. Let's begin with my DNFs or books that I chose not to finish. This month there were two of them and one of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. That book was All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. If you want to hear why I chose not to finish that book, you can check out my mid-month wrap-up. This month I also DNF'd The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling. This I'm disappointed by, and I I think a lot of this is going to come down to personal preference, whether it's going to be what you're looking for or not. I was very excited about the premise of this book. It's a YA book with a sapphic romance and paranormal elements to it. So one of the heroines is a vampire and the other one is a teen girl who ever since her brother passed away has gained the ability to see how people are going to die, except she thinks it's a curse and she doesn't want it. So anytime someone touches her, she will experience the last moments of their lives and understandably this is kind of traumatizing. So the vampire girl is supposed to convince her to hone her gifts and use it for a community she's a part of um, and it ends up supposedly being a romance. Great premise. I was like yeah you're giving us like sapphic vampires and paranormal stuff. This sounds like it's gonna be really fun. Unfortunately this was just really boring for me. It read more like a YA contemporary which y'all know I just do not pick up very often. They're just not that interesting to me. I was hoping for something that would be more of a page turner, something that would have some sense of mystery to what's really going on or tension at least from the heads of the characters and there was none of that. I think the problem is that everything is sort of laid out for you so quickly that there's no sense of mystery. It could have been done from the head of the human girl where she's wondering like what's going on with this strange girl and who is she and like like have tension there and there's just no tension. It's just it's very it's kind of like angsty YA contemporary, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if that's what you enjoy, if that's what you're looking for, you might still like this and I really wanted to like it. But for me, I was like, I just like, it's, it's not, it's not very interesting. So I decided to DNF this one at 20%, but for some of you that might sound of interest, so maybe check it out. Moving on, let's talk about my two star reads. This month I had two of them and one of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap up. This also might be this is among my most disappointing reads of the year. This is Extasia by Claire Legrand. It comes out in 
February. I am so disappointed. This was one of my most anticipated things and I gave it two stars. So if you want to hear details, check out my mid-month wrap up. I am still very bummed about this one, honestly. Uh, but they all can't be winners. I also gave two stars to Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Sword of Summer by Rick Riordan. If you want to hear kind of a balanced discussion of it, I'm going to point you in the direction of the live show for the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club, which was hosted over on Mara's channel. This was her pick for us this month. Mara loves Rick Riordan, so she really loved this. Amanda loved it. Me and Liana were less of fans. And it, like we get into a lot of why, and I think part of it is what you like in your middle grade or how you like it to approach things. For me, this was too jokey all the time, even when really serious things were happening and I didn't like how much things were taken lightly that maybe maybe shouldn't have been. There were also some things that I was like, really? Are we doing this? Like there's a, a Muslim girl who works for one of the Norse gods, which I'm like, how though? Okay. Um, but she has a magical hijab and I don't know. I don't know. It was, it was kind of weird. So I didn't love this. I gave it two stars. I don't think I'll continue on with the series. Um, Rick Riordan is a little bit of a hit and miss for me. I've enjoyed some of his stuff. Other things have worked less for me. There's also some like low-key fat phobic stuff in here, which I've noticed in some of his older books. I gave it a pass with Percy Jackson because that came out in like 2005, but this is 2015. And so I'm like, uh, it should be better. I don't know. Anyway, stuff that bothered me, but the people who love it really, really love it. So Again, if you want to hear kind of very different takes from people who had different experiences with it, go check out that live show. Then I gave two books two and a half stars, and I did talk about both of them in my mid-month wrap-up. The biggest disappointment of those was Gilded by Marissa Meyer, because I pre-ordered a signed copy of it. Still kind of disappointed about that. I also gave two and a half stars to The Rogue King by Abigail Owen. This was sent to me for a review by Entangled Publishing. Moving on, let's talk about my three star reads. This month there were three of them and two of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are Nor by Nettie Okorafor and Once Upon a Duke by Erica Ridley. If you want to hear detailed thoughts on those, check out my mid-month wrap-up. I also gave three stars to The Big Reveal by Jen Larson. This was definitely a mixed bag for me. I love the premise of it. I like the message of it and what it's trying to do. It's got pretty good fat representation. It centers a girl who is fat and a dancer and um, trying to raise money to go to an elite program that she can't afford and so gets together with some of her friends to put on a secret burlesque show to make that happen. So what's great about this book is that it's really a book pushing back on fat phobia, addressing bullying, addressing misogyny, and the particular ways that misogyny can get targeted at fat women. There's a lot that I really like about it and like about the message that it's trying to bring. Where it lost me a little bit was the actual approach to the storytelling. I really liked the beginning. I liked the inclusivity. I liked the found family and the friendship elements of it. And I really liked the ending, although I think the ending could get a little soapboxy for some people if you don't like like messaging to be more heavy handed, this might lose you. But I liked it. I was like, yeah, there's like a soapbox moment. It was fun. But I really liked the beginning and end. The middle just was a little boring. It was kind of repetitive. There wasn't enough tension or forward momentum for it to really keep my attention throughout all of it. And it felt long. And this isn't a very long book. It's like 300 pages, but it felt long while reading it. So I ended up giving it three stars. I like what it's doing. There were there, there was a lot of, a lot to like here, but just know that in terms of pacing and storytelling, it, it's a little bit more of a mixed bag. Then this month I gave one book three and a half stars. That was A Snake Falls to Earth by Darcy Little Badger. I had an audio review copy of this one from Neck Alley, so thank you to the publisher for giving me that. So early this year I read A Lots Away, which was really huge by Darcy Little Badger last year, and I loved it. This is a very, very different book, and while there are things that I do very much love like about it. I rounded it up to four stars on Goodreads and I, you know, there's a, a lot that I like about it. Just know going in that it's quite a different story. Pacing isn't always perfect and I think for most of this it's a very slow paced thoughtful character driven story that is going back and forth between these two perspectives. One of whom is a leap on Apache human girl who is trying to figure out how to translate the 
words that she recorded from her great grandmother, I believe, before she passed away, um, when they don't really know their language very much and figure out what's going on and also deal with some, some family issues. Meanwhile, in this alternate world, we have a cottonmouth snake who is personified, and he is going on these sort of adventures trying to find himself in the world of the animal people, and it's all drawing on indigenous mythology from the Lipan Apache people, which is the tribe that Darcy Little Badger is associated with. So there was a lot that I thought was really fun and really charming. I liked a lot of the stories and the way that it wove together mythology. There were really funny moments. There were wonderful side characters, especially in the animal world. Where it lost me a little bit was near the end of the book. The, the two timelines kind of intersect and a lot of stuff happens and I feel like it very much changes the tone of the book. Something that had been this like kind of quiet, thoughtful progression with some adventures in between suddenly becomes this big like bam, 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 all this stuff is happening and it's not all fully explained and doesn't always totally completely make sense, but it's exciting and I, I'm like, I wish that this had just continued to be what it was throughout. Anyway, I, I still think it's very much well worth your time, well worth reading. I certainly wouldn't dissuade anyone from reading it. I would just say, no going in, that it's a very different book from A Lots Away, very, very different structurally and in terms of the story that it's telling. And it does have some of those sort of pacing issues towards the end. It didn't totally land the ending for me, but I still really liked it and I gave it three and a half stars. Next, let's talk about my four star reads. This month there were five of them and two of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap up. Those books are The Perishing by Natasha Dion and The Flames of Albion by Jean Z. Menzies. So I talk about both of those in my mid-month wrap up. This book in particular, I also talk about at greater length in a reading vlog I did where I'm pairing books that got popular on TikTok or BookTok with books that you guys picked for me in the comments of a video that I did. And so I paired this one with The Atlas Six, which I will talk about a little bit later in this video. But if you want to see more of that, I will link that video up above. It's been a really fun series of vlogs to do. I also gave four stars to The Citadel of the Autark by Jean Wolfe. This is the second part of this bind up of Sword and Citadel and the fourth book of the Book of the New Sun. The, the final sort of final. I think he did eventually write another book that I may at some point read, but it's it's the it's kind of the final. It does wrap it up. So I really liked this a lot. It's considered a modern classic of sci fantasy. And the fourth volume is fascinating because it sheds a different light on a lot of the events of books one through three. It ties up these loose ends it gives you more information about stuff that makes you want to go back and reread it because suddenly it's like, oh, oh, there was like a bigger meaning to all of these things that you were setting up. It's like all these dominoes that were being set up in the first three books where you would read it, but maybe not fully understand the significance of it because you hadn't gotten far enough. I really love it when authors do that. I think it's cool to see, so I liked it. Also, the, the whole thing is placing Severian, who is the main character. He's a um, part of the Torturers Guild. And he's kind of this like perverse Christ figure, I guess you could say, where it kind of like takes things from the life and experience of Christ from the Bible and twists it or changes it in some way. And it continues to do that in here. So it's a really interesting series. I will say the first half of it is like there's a lot of misogyny, there's a lot of misogyny and a lot of like sexual exploitation of women. All of that significantly tones down in part two. There's still a little bit of it here and there, but it's not nearly to the level of the first couple of, of books. And I'll, anyway, so that's the thing to be aware of. It may bother some people. I, I think for me, I can tell that it's not the author thinking those things are okay. It's really about what the character is doing. And while I still think it's kind of a lot in the first couple of books, I understand the reasoning for it. And especially with like, what he's doing with the literature piece of this. Anyway, I ended up giving this four stars. And overall, I would give the Book of the New Sun four stars. I really like it. It's not a new favorite for me. It doesn't quite rise to the level of wanting to give it like five stars. 
but I think it's very good. I think there's a reason that it's a classic. And alongside that, I gave four stars to this little book, Jean Wolfe's The Book of the New Sun, a chapter guide by Michael Andre Dury Driussi. This is from an indie author who basically put together a chapter guide for, um, for the entire four books and more actually. I will say there is like a little bit at the end that I haven't read that follows some of the additional short stories and the final book in here, but I'm, I'm going to call it read because I read the bulk of it. But I would definitely recommend if you're going to read the Book of the New Sun, this is a good companion to have alongside it if you want to catch more of the references. It's not a perfect book. It doesn't catch everything, but it does highlight many of the literary and biblical and mythological references and different things that are happening in the text. So I would recommend it to you as a companion for the series if that is something you're interested in. The final book that I gave four stars to this month was Mistletoe Season by Michelle Major. So this is a small town holiday romance with a grumpy hero and a very overworked heroine who doesn't know how to say no <laughs> and needs to learn how to say no and have better boundaries. She's got a lot going on. She's a single mom. She's taken over a restaurant for her mom because her mom had a stroke and her dad had passed away and she feels a lot of pressure there, but she also has this other thing she wants to do. I would say that this probably falls more in the realm of women's fiction with a strong romantic element. So if you're looking for something that is primarily about the romance, that's not quite what you're going to get here. But I do think it's very good, if stressful, depending on your personality. I did at times find this stressful to read because she had so much on her plate and couldn't say no. And I was like, oh my God, you need boundaries, lady. You need some better boundaries. She does eventually learn, but it takes a while to get there. Anyway, I still liked it pretty well. I gave it four stars. And if you're looking for a fun, festive, small town holiday romance with lots of family drama, maybe try it. Uh, this was sent to me for review from a PR company. Moving on, we're going to talk about my four and a half star reads. There were more than usual. I had four of them and I didn't talk about any of them in my mid-month wrap up. So we're going to talk about all of them here. The first one is also the first book I ever won from a Goodreads giveaway. I didn't know people actually won these when I won this book and I was so excited. This is A Clash of Steel by C.B. Lee. It's a remix of Treasure Island and I did end up listening to the audiobook of this. I had it from my library and I really liked it. I think this is such a cool series of books that they're doing. Um, I read The Little Women one and I really liked it. This one is retelling Treasure Island. But what's cool about it is it's taking a real life historical figure, this woman who was kind of like a pirate queen, like a Chinese pirate queen that doesn't get talked about, and making her the one who has this hidden treasure that is, is known. And then you have these two girls, one of whom has always been kept super safe and hidden away and wants to see the world and wants adventure and wants to prove herself. And then a girl who's always grown up on the sea and the two of them along with a lovely crew going to search out this hidden treasure and dealing with drama along the way. And I just loved it. They've got a sapphic romance that happens, which is super adorable. Do note that this deals with some intense family dynamics, like child neglect and uh, emotional abuse, I guess you could say. So there's some intense stuff, there's some violence in here, but I really, really liked it. I think this is a fantastic reimagining. And the author's note at the end is really cool because it gives you a little bit more of the context from the history that a lot of us maybe didn't even know about. So if you haven't picked it up, I would recommend it. I gave it four and a half stars. I also gave four and a half stars to Lovesick Braves by Pamela Sanderson. And this one actually has a live show discussion. Michelle and I brought back the Indigenous Romance Read Along for this month for Native American Heritage Month. And both of us really loved this. We, I think, liked it better than book one in the series. And uh, it was really cute. It's two people in difficult socioeconomic circumstances coming together and finding love. It's also continuing the macro plot of the Crooked Rock Urban Indian Center having to fight with the city that they're in to find a new home. So you get more of that. You get more of these side characters. I really want to continue on with the series. It's a complete four book series and I've been really enjoying it. The 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 thing that brought it down to four and a half stars guys is the the steamy scenes. The steamy scenes are very cringe. <laughs> 
they're, they're not very good. Uh, and, and when we're using the terminology man thing, no, 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 just no. We should not be calling anything a man thing. No, nope. So uh, yeah, that was what downgraded it. But overall, I really liked it. I think it's a great series. And uh, if you're looking for some indie romance that's super cute supporting an indigenous author, you should go check out the series. I also gave four and a half stars to Stones of Light by Zach Argyle. This was an audio review copy from the author. He's writing this indie fantasy series. A month or two ago, I had read book one in the series, which I gave four stars. This one got four and a half stars. I think it is a step up and it's very, very good. If you are looking for a good epic indie fantasy series with an amazing narrator, like let me tell you, the narrator they got is so good, so good. A pleasure to listen to. Although there is a lot going on, so I found that I did best with both of these books when I got the ebook from Kindle Unlimited. It's available on Kindle Unlimited, but I read along with, for parts of it, not the whole thing, but I read along with a lot of it on the ebook and then also listened to the audiobook. And that helped because there are a lot of moving pieces and it's a little more complicated as a fantasy, so that helped me follow it. But I love this. I love the growth arcs that we have for the different characters. The stakes are really high. There's a lot of little moments that just feel so thoughtful and well done. And you know, it's not all that often that you see a guy writing fantasy and doing a fantastic job with female characters, but Zach Argyle is kind of killing it with this. He's got several main female characters, not all women, but like several of them are women, and they feel like characters. They are fully fleshed out, different individuals. They are not stereotypes, they are not props for the male characters, they have their own things, and it's great, and it feels real, and it hits in ways that I think are great. There's just like little moments throughout the book where I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> like a moment near the beginning where one of these characters is a new mom and is like struggling with the anxiety and the challenges of that that she didn't expect, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this definitely reads like how th how things are. There's a moment where a middle-aged woman gets to be a hero and has this moment. I just, there, there were things that I really loved about this. It's not a perfect book, like it's early in his writing career, and I think you can kind of tell that to some extent, like this is his second book that he's written, second book in the series, but I think there is so much here to like and also so much potential for where he could go in his career. So I definitely would be interested in continuing to read from him. I think it's really very good. The magic system is cool. The world is cool. There's a lot of like big politics and stuff. I think the main downside for me here was there were some moments, and again, I think a lot of this just has to do with writing experience more than anything else, but there were a few moments where I was like, okay, this feels a little bit contrived for the plot which happens, it, it happens. Um, but there were a few moments like that. And uh, there was also a death late in the book that I think was supposed to be really emotional, but wasn't. I don't think we got the proper emotional build up necessary for that character and for some of the related relationships for it to really hit the way that it needed to. So not a perfect book, but a very, very strong book and one that I would recommend to you. So four and a half stars for Stones of Light. The final book that I gave four and a half stars to this month was Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. This is my second book in the Discworld series that I've ever read, and I really enjoy them. I think I actually enjoyed this more than Guards Guards, which was the first one that I read. And I think it's because this one has a lot more big ideas that it's exploring beyond just the humor. I appreciate the humor and the wordplay, but I think when that's the main focus of it, it does get a little old for me after a while. Uh, although it, it, there are things that really do genuinely make me laugh that, oh my gosh, like this book, <laughs> the wizards have created a thinking machine that literalizes things about computers and it's it's pretty funny. Like it has a mouse that you have to feed cheese to. And then there's a thing where it's like, I don't know why it needs all these small religious symbols. And I'm like, what? Oh, icons, icons, of course. So it's a lot of like that kind of stuff. It's funny. But also it's an interesting plot and it's addressing some like big ideas and big issues in a way that is kind of lighthearted, but 
disappointed at the same time. The basic idea of this is that in Discworld, which is similar to our world, but not totally, <laughs> in Discworld, instead of Santa Claus, they have the Hogfather, who is this jolly big bearded man who brings toys to children on a sleigh drawn by four large pigs. And this year, somebody has hired an assassin to kill the Hogfather. And so death, the personification of death, takes over the job <laughs> while other people try to figure out a way to solve this problem that could be very challenging. So it's a little bit bizarre, but it's fun. It's interesting. I think it's got great characters and it's doing a good job of exploring questions like the socioeconomics of the holiday season and how, okay, we have Santa, but there are children who get lots of expensive gifts and there are children who do not. And like, let's talk about that or talking about the pagan origins of holidays or the real meaning of belief and like where it comes from. So I really liked this. Four and a half stars. It was very good. And uh, I read it just in time to record a podcast episode. So the podcast that I co-host along with Leanna from Leanna's Library and Izzy from Happy For Now on different episodes, um, we're going to be doing an episode on The Hogfather with Leanna, myself, and Alan from the Library of Alexandria. So um, that podcast is always linked down below if you want to go follow it, but that's going to be a fun one. Next, we have my five star reads. And I think this month I had seven of them. Decent number of, of five stars. Three of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are Nature Poem by Tommy Pico, The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien, and uh, there's also a live show discussion for this, which was very fun, and The Righteous by Renee Audier. If you want to hear about any of those, check out my mid-month wrap-up. I also gave five stars to The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This, as I said, is the other book that I talked about at length in that reading vlog. I really enjoyed this. I think that this book more effectively does what Naomi Novik was trying to do in A Deadly Education. So I think if you are looking for something like that, dark academia with fantasy, with morally gray characters that is very much about the philosophy of everything, maybe check it out. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is slower paced. And again, it is an ideas book. Not everybody likes an ideas book. If you need a lot of plot, you might not like this as much as you want to. But if you like something that's exploring like the philosophy of morality, <laughs> or the ethics of science, <laughs> like through a magical dark academia sort of thing, maybe try it. I, I really enjoyed it. And I did give it five stars. This month, I also got to reread two of my most favorite books, and I gave them both five stars. The main reason I gave them five stars is that rereads in general are not eligible to get six stars for me, which is favorite of the year status. Um, otherwise, of course, both of these would. But I reread The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I, I, I love, I love this book so much. Maybe one day I'll talk more about it. But yeah, this is, it's, I just, I, I just, I love it so much. It's so fun and cozy. This was the perfect time of year to read it. I listened to it on audio for my reread and it was great. It was exactly what I needed during a stressful time. Quoth, oh Quoth. Quoth is, you know, I mean, is he a foolish young man who is too smart for his own good? Yes, of course, of course. But I just, I love it. I love Denna. I, I love the, I, it's great, it's great. I also, of course, reread The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. We finished up our reread of the Broken Earth trilogy and I loved it. Like this holds up so well. There's a reason this is one of my all time favorite series, period. What are you doing if you haven't read them? Go read them, they're so good, they're so good. I also gave five stars to The Witness by Nora Roberts. This was the book club pick for Patreon book club this month. We did a mystery and this was the one everybody voted on. I really enjoyed this. This is romantic suspense and good job Mara if you're watching this picking a book that I would enjoy. This is one of a couple books that she gifted to me that she thought I would really like from Nora Roberts and she wasn't wrong. I did listen to this one on audio. The audiobook was great. I just really enjoyed the heroine of this story quite a lot. She's quirky and nerdy and um, this was really fun. I think this is similar structurally to something like The Obsession, which is the first book I read from Nora Roberts and really enjoyed, where it has a really intense beginning, like backstory for the heroine, and then you follow her years later 
in a small town where no one knows her story and her past, where she falls in love with somebody. So in this case, it is the local sheriff or police chief, I guess police chief. She is on the run because she had been a witness to a murder by the Russian mafia. And it's, I, I really liked it a lot. I thought it was very fun and cozy and charming and it was exactly what I was looking for. And overall people seemed to like this in the book club as well. It was a little bit of a mixed bag. We had the people who were like the three, three and a half star readers where they were like, I liked it but had some issues with it. And then people like me who just loved it but no one hated it. So that was a win. Really liked this, gave it five stars and I think I'll keep reading periodically from Nora Roberts. I just enjoy reading that kind of thing from her. The final book that I read this month is my one and only six star read, which is a favorite of the year. And I did talk about this book at length in my mid month wrap up. So I'm not going to talk about it a whole lot here. But this is All the Feels by Olivia Dade. I love Olivia Dade. She I think I can say is now among my favorite romance authors. I love the way that she writes. Her humor really works for me. I love the way she does fat representation. And um, this was great. I loved it. It was fantastic. So there you go. Those are the 25 books that I read in the month of November. A um, little bit of a mixed bag, but I definitely had some good ones and I had some great rereads, which were nice like comfort reads heading into the end of the year. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, tell me about a favorite book that you like to reread. Do you have something like that? Do you reread? And if you do, do you have something that's like a good comfort read where you know if you reread it, it's just going to be great and it's just going to be really feel good? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.